Well, this only took two years. <laughs> and don't act all surprised either, because remember, it's me we're dealing with here. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. And yes, I am experimenting with a new framing uh, scheme here. I meant to do this all along, it's just I kept forgetting to, uh, as I set up for each new video, uh, having my face dead center of the frame is not very conducive to when I'm holding up CDs or records, I have to crane my neck, you know. So hopefully this new framing uh, setup will uh, eliminate that uh, little handicap there. But uh, yes, as I kind of teased in my cold open, it's taken me two years to get around to this, to doing a uh, relaunch of this feature. Uh, my good friend, my little brother Noah, and his wife Alyssa, uh, I went to visit them a couple of years ago, uh, summer of 2021. So if you look back on that channel, you will see a video that I did with him called uh, Album Diaries. Well, back when he was an active YouTuber, his channel's still there. You'll see Noah and Alyssa in the uh, uh, featured channels in my description down below. When he was an active YouTuber, he was a music reviewer, and he would sometimes, you know, he would review albums in a very, you know, a very neutral context, just talking about the songs, the artist, the vocals, the instrumentals, blah, 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 the production, all that. Uh, but every once in a while, he would do a video about an album that uh, he had a personal connection to. And he called that feature Album Diaries. And I kind of, you know, after a while, he well, he did three or four episodes of that before he uh, kind of uh, retired his channel, before his channel went dormant. And uh, ever since he started that, I kind of had the desire to do a, something similar to mine, although I kind of talk more about... Uh, I never reviewed albums, I don't think, for as long as Noah did or any of my other YouTube friends, most of whom are now inactive. Uh, I've kind of always talked about albums, uh, my personal feelings about albums, rather than the analytical thing. So this feature is not going to be all that different. But uh, I like the title of it so much, Album Diaries, and I tried for weeks and weeks, months really, to come up with some alternate title that didn't sound cheesy or dorky, and I couldn't do that. So I asked him if I could uh, borrow, or since he's no longer doing it, to officially take over the title of Album Diaries from him, and to which he agreed. And so that joint video between me and him, in which we discussed uh, Bleacher's Strange Desire, by the way, an album that we both have a personal connection to. Look at you upstaging me on talking about the production and the instrumentation and this stuff. And I just say, I like it. That was kind of his, his official passing off of the torch of the Album Diaries series to me. And of course, at that point, I said, in just a couple months' time, I'll be coming out with regular Album Diaries videos, right? <laughs> Say, uh, famous last words. Anyway, yes, it took me two years. I decided to... Uh, and I kind of wasn't thinking about doing Album Diaries. And then these two albums came out, uh, and it kind of got the idea rolling around in my head. Uh, but I had been kind of thinking about uh, doing Album Diaries eventually. Um, I will be doing something a little bit different with the concept. I will be talking about two albums in each video. Uh, I've got another three or four planned, or, you know, um, conceived anyway, not really planned. Don't know when they're coming out. Hopefully I won't make you wait two years for the next episode. I, I will try my darndest not to. Um, but the two albums that I talk about will have some kind of a connection. They might be uh, skimpy. They might, they might be a strong connection, they might be a tenuous connection, but they'll have something in common. Uh, and I will be talking about uh, my personal uh, histories with the, uh, these albums, and maybe some some sort of a review. I was never, I don't think I was ever very good at album reviews, which is why I kind of abandoned that uh, a couple of years ago, but let's see how it goes. And I've let the intro and backstory go on so long that I need a little drink. Excuse me. Non-alcoholic drink. It's just water. I actually, honestly, personal note, I have never felt the desire or the peer pressure or anything to drink alcohol, and I never have. So. I'm not a goody two-shoes, I just never drink alcohol. So Anyway, so yes, these first two albums I'm going to talk about, and this, I'm kind of calling this video a soft relaunch of Album Diaries, because I honestly don't know how much 
personal stories I have with either of these albums. Actually, the first one I do kind of have, not necessarily of the album, but of the artist, I have a personal story. But uh, the thing that these two albums have in common is that they both, uh, well, a couple of things. They're both favorite albums of mine from the 1990s. They're both probably in my top five favorite albums of the 90s. And they both, just in the last few months, uh, got their first ever releases on vinyl. They've been issued on vinyl, vinyl for the first time. And so let's go ahead and start in on the first one here. This one is from 1993. It is the band's third album. It is the album called Ring by a group called the Connells. Uh, they, they hail from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And I first heard about them back in the late 80s. A record store, it was a uh, regional chain store called Music Plus uh, down in Southern California where I grew up. And at one point they got in this machine. It was called Personics. And it was a thing that um, you, it was, you could make your own mixtapes, you know, professionally made mixtapes. There's a little catalog to go through. The, you know, and back at that time, there was no internet or anything. Anyway, you could choose uh, a certain number of songs for, what was it, 99 cents or $1.29 per song, something like that, and fill out a little form, take it up to the counter, and in 15 minutes or so, you would have a mixtape. And you could have your own, you know, put in your own title, and it would have a, a paper insert that had the title and uh, the customer's name, uh, the person who made the mix, um, in, you know, printed on it and stuff. So, you know, for its time, it was very sophisticated. I would chose several songs that I really enjoyed, and I needed a couple songs to fill up space on the tape. I, I didn't want to just, you know, leave blank space on the tape. And so there were a couple of songs, uh, not from this album, but from one of their earlier albums. Uh, by this group called the Connells. And uh, as I recall, you could listen to sound clips of the uh, of the songs, which, you know, for that, for that time, it was pretty, that was pretty uh, high technology at that point. Uh, so I listened to a couple of songs and I, I kind of liked it. It was something different. It was something interesting. So I went ahead and uh, added one or maybe it might have been two songs by the Connells to that first mixtape. And that was how I discovered the Connells, to make a long story short. So, uh, yes, I, I just it loved that tape so much. I listened to it several times. And before long, I ended up buying their first couple of albums, I believe. Yeah, I think I was into CDs at that point. So I think I only ever owned their albums on CD. Uh, so, yeah, and I had been buying their albums ever since. Uh, after a break of about 20 years, they finally put out a new album back in 2021, I think it was. Or it might have been last year. So, uh, yeah, they, they are still going. Some of the band members are different. But uh, this was what I consider their, their glory days. This was right in the middle of that period back on, uh, on TVT Records. They put out their first seven, eight albums on TVT Records. And, uh, yes, this was their fifth album. It was called Ring. And I believe it was their most successful album as well. Uh, the, the song 7475, which is a, a fantastic ballad, that one was a big hit in Europe. It was their, their biggest single in Europe, and it was actually, they made a music video of it, and I think it made the rounds on MTV here in the States as well. So, but, you know, here in the States, all they ever achieved was minor, minor success. They had a couple of videos on MTV, and that was about it. Uh, and they, then they just kind of faded into obscurity. Not a lot of people know about the Connells here in the States, but they are one of my favorite groups of all time. And uh, this was a fantastic album. And the reason for the release uh, on vinyl this year is it was, uh, it, this year is the album's 30th anniversary. It was, this was put out first in 1993. And I have owned the CD for all that time. The original TVT record CD. This is on a, as you can see on this uh, spine here, this is a red tinted jewel case. Uh, the, I, I tra eh, transplanted it into a red jewel case about four years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, the label Craft Recordings, it's a reissue label, put out put it out on vinyl, and they put out a remastered CD with a second disc of demos, live tracks, and other stuff, and some B sides on the end of the uh, uh, the first disc as well. So I had to I had to buy the CD and the vinyl, uh, the record at the same time, and I don't know if I'm ready to get rid of the original CD yet. It's still, it's just, you know, it's so personal to me. It has a, a great personal meaning to me. It's one of my favorite albums, as I said, of the 90s. 
But uh, yes, this is a fantastic album. I highly recommend listening to it. Um, the Connells got compared a lot to REM back in the day, so and they were kind of uh, they kind of catered to the same college rock uh, audience. So uh, it, it the difference is it took me forever, and I'm talking decades, to really start appreciating REM. But you know the Connells from day one, I, I was there, and uh, so yes, this is. Okay, I've said it a few times already, and I'm going to say it several more times. An excellent album. Nearly every single song on here is just... I, I never skip over any of the songs. Uh, Slackjawed is a great opener. A uh, great uh, high-energy song. And uh, uh, the band member George Huntley, he is... Uh, George Huntley was this guy, I believe. And well, is. I mean, he, he's still alive. And as far as I know, all these guys are still alive. Uh, Doug, Doug McMillan, the lead vocalist... And uh, one of them is Mike Connell, and one of them is Dave Connell. I might have them reversed. They're kind of the kind of the front men. It, you know, unless you count Doug McMillan as the vocalist. Doug McMillan doesn't play, didn't play in instruments. He just sang. And uh, Peel Wimberly was the drummer. And was George Huntley? No, he was the guitarist. One of the Connell brothers was the bassist. So anyway, uh, the member uh, George Huntley. He actually put out a solo album. It was right around. 93, when Ring came out. I can't remember if it was before or after Ring came out. But he always contributes one or two songs to every studio album as well. And they're always, you can always tell when it's a George Huntley song because it's a little unusual, a little different. Not necessarily that it doesn't go with the rest of the album. It kind of stands out, but not necessarily in a bad way. And one of the songs is Doing You. It's uh, on side one here. And the lyrics are great. Uh, they're very, uh, very kind of acerbic. Uh, one of the lo one of the lines in the chorus is "Doing you is like doing time," so uh, there you go. And um, "Eyes on the Ground" is great. Perhaps my favorite song on the album is "New Boy," and that actually uh, was the the title track of an EP that they put out uh, shortly after. Was it after or before Ring? I can't remember, but. Uh, and that had a couple of a couple of B sides that end up and they ended up putting on the remastered CD, so so I now no longer have use for the uh, the New Boy EP. And actually, I think I already got rid of it. But anyway, uh, Hey You is another great song, a great upbeat song. As I mentioned, seventy four seventy five is a fantastic ballad, and the music video was really interesting and unique. What they did was they took the uh, high school yearbook from 1975 from their high school and they called up a bunch of the uh, people from that graduating class. And what they, uh, they, let's see, this was, well, this was 1993. So about uh, 18 years, I guess, after their high school graduation, they showed the yearbook portraits of these various people. And then they had these same people stand, you know, just standing in front of the camera. None of the people ever spoke in the video, but it was kind of interesting because you could sort of see how much satisfaction or dissatisfaction they had in their lives after high school graduation. That's what I'm trying to explain here, is you could see that a lot of that in the various people. An excellently done video. It's on YouTube. Look up uh, the Connell 7475 and watch the video. It's fantastic. And the song, of course, is excellent. So yes, um, this album had probably two of the best ballads that the Connells ever did, 7475 and Disappointed. It's another amazing ballad. And uh, Burden is a great song. It has some amazing drum work in it, in the chorus. There's some great drumming in it. I don't suppose it's all that elaborate. It was just, it's just the way that the drumming fit the song uh, in the chorus. It was just, I, it, it catches your ear. And it was uh, wonderful. I'm trying to use other adjectives than fantastic. I use that way too many times. But uh, let's see. Spiral is a good, uh, uh, another good uh, uh, ballad song. Carry My Picture is great as well. Yeah, I mean, that, as you can see, that covers nearly every song on here. Um, the lyrics, I, I've never really, since I've been listening to the Connells for so long, um, the lyrics back then didn't really, I couldn't really tell you what any of, so, any of the song lyrics meant. And since I've been listening to them this whole time, I've never really taken the time to decipher 
or to try and decipher what the lyrics mean. And uh, so some of you with fresh ears, some of you might be able to tell what they mean by uh, in, in the lyrics to some of their songs. But for me, it's just excellent music. Some of the first uh, music with words that I ever got into. This was, I discovered them very shortly after my the, the crest of my instrumental new age jazz and soundtrack music um, uh, passion or whatever you call it. That's the, they're one of my first loves of music with lyrics and uh, have stuck with me ever since. I've got uh, pretty much all their albums. There is one album that I'm missing, uh, the one before, the most recent one. It, it came out uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, it was an independent only release and I never quite found it. I've never really, really looked for it either. Um, strangely enough, it's much easier to look for it now than it was back then with the limited uh, internet resources and stuff. So I could probably find it pretty easily. I just haven't bothered looking, uh, which is surprising since their last most recent album came out. You, you would think that I would, hey, this is good. I would go back and try and find their other album, but it hasn't happened yet. But anyway, uh, yes, long story short, the Connells is a fantastic band of mine, and uh, this came out in 1993, so I would have been living in Nevada at the time, a little town in Nevada, and so probably had to go into Las Vegas to the Tower Records or some other uh, record store and pick it, up, pick it up there. In fact, I think I've, I might have had my mother um, go and look for it for me, because I think I probably had to work. She went into town to get groceries and stuff, and... and uh, Though I can't remember for sure. I might have gone and picked it up myself. But anyway, yes. The Connells, their fifth album, Ring, is excellent. I've probably gone on way too long about it already. So let's switch to the next album. But uh, yes, check out that album if you can. Uh, it, it's on streaming surfaces everywhere. And uh, I'm going to drink. Did I, say, did I say streaming surfaces? As in a, a surface? No, streaming services. My speaking gets a little wobbly if I my mouth my throat gets too dry. So anyway, the second album uh, it came out at the very end of the nineties in uh, the year nineteen ninety nine, and I can't remember how I happened upon this. I was doing a lot of you know just putting my feelers out, just listening to stuff at random, picking up CDs you know used CDs for very little that um, that looked interesting from the cover art. And I think this was one of those that I just found out about and uh, got my friend from San Diego heavy into the, this guy as well. Uh, he's one of his favorites. I actually turned uh, Clued Noah into this album as well, and this uh, he's one of his favorites now. So uh, maybe that'll te that tells you something. Maybe you guys should check it out too. I'm talking about Owsley. Uh, his, his name is Will Owsley, or his name was Will Owsley. He has actually passed away back in 2010, I think it was. It's been a while ago. And uh, he was the touring guitarist for uh, artists as such as Amy Grant, and she's the only one that comes to mind. I'm sure he. I think he toured with several other artists. He was in their their, their touring band playing guitar, and he eventually, back at the end of the '90s, he decided to put out a solo album, and he started out with a bang. This was one of the best power pop albums ever, according to me. Uh, but yes, it's uh, his first album. It's self titled. Came out, as I said, in 1999 on the Giant label, which I think was a uh, subsidiary, subsidiary of BMG. Subsidiary. I'm having trouble speaking today for some reason. But, uh, and again, kind of like the Connell's uh, ring, nearly every song on this is absolutely amazing. Oh No, The Radio. If you listen to, if you've never heard this album before, you put on the song Oh No, The Radio, it starts out kind of... It might give you the false impression that his songwriting is very simplistic. Let the, let the song play and let let the album go. Uh, you know, let the album continue. Uh, don't be fooled by the first song. Uh, the, the lyrics get very clever. It's just the song kind of has... It sounds kind of simplistic, as I said, at least at the very beginning. But uh, he's very clever with lyrics, and he is a master at the instrumental hook. I mean, nearly every song on here has a hook that will just absolutely stick in your head like glue. Uh, I'm All Right is a very uh, kind of post-grunge, uh, rocking sort of thing. It's got those fuzzy guitars and the epitome of a power pop song, essentially. And uh, Coming Up Roses is kind of a, ba a little bit more on the ballad side. 
And so is the good old days, as the song, uh, the title suggests, it's kind of a, a nostalgia trip or a little reminiscence and stuff. Uh, the sky is falling is very clever. He has a lot of, uh, a lot of clever lyrics in a lot of these songs. Um, you just have to listen to him to appreciate him. Uh, sentimental favorites, another ballad. Zavolo House is one of my favorite songs on the album. It kicks off side two. And if you're looking to soundtrack a Halloween party, Zavolo House is perfect because it, it's it's a song about a haunted house in the neighborhood. Whether it was a real a real house in the neighborhood he, he grew up in or not, I don't know. Whether he just made it up, who knows. But it's, the, the lyrics are absolutely amazing. Uh, they can they could they are hilarious at some points so it's just a very very fun song this entire album is fun and uh yeah sunny boy is uh under the great uh, i guess it's kind of a mid tempo maybe up tempo song and uh, uh uncle john's farm is kind of a uh, it's kind of along the lines of of uh, good old days it's a little bit more of a sentimental sentimental favorite <laughs> of uh, of songs and class clown closes out the album this is just, as you can see, kind of like with Ring by the Connells, I can say good things about nearly every song on this album. And I have listened to it several, several times, many times, and I love it. Um, he did put out a second album, which I cannot remember the name of. Uh, wasn't uh, It didn't strike me as nearly as good as his self-titled debut from 1999. And yes, I do have it um, on CD. Sorry about the shaking of the camera. One of these days I'll show you my uh, video setup so you can see uh, where everything is. But yes, I have the CD. I actually had the original uh, um, U.S. domestic issue of the CD, but I found the... Uh, oh, this doesn't have the Obi on it. But I uh, found the Japanese issue of the CD, and it has a bonus track. Uh, oh, sorry about the glare. Mess With Me is a bonus track on the Japanese issue of the CD. So, uh, But yes, I am not getting rid of this. Love both of these albums so much, as I said. Favorite albums of mine of the 90s that uh, I love them so much. I'm keeping the, C the CDs and um, augmenting my collection with the records. And they both sound fantastic. Uh, no issues playing them at all. Um, even though they, uh, on the first side of the Connell's Ring, they cram, I think, seven songs on it. Uh, so, yeah. The, the albums back in the uh, 90s, in the, the CD era, tended to be a little bit longer because they didn't have the physical limitations of running time uh, that vinyl did. So, uh, But yes, they, uh, the, the songs were mastered well. Great sound on both of these uh, albums. And yes, this one is actually put out by, by Real Gone Records. Uh, it's another uh, vinyl reissue label that, uh, does, that does an excellent job. Oh, and I forgot to show you the sleeves. Oh, and this one com uh, comes on the uh, t a tan-colored translucent vinyl. As you can see, it's translucent. Very cool. And uh, has a picture sleeve. I like to, once I've cleaned the records and uh, stuff, I like to put them in plastic sleeves. And so, yes, it's got this... Uh, I have it right side up? Yeah. The song credits here. And then, and interestingly enough, you turn it over, it's at a 90-degree angle. And a nice little... Fuzzy self-portrait, portrait or self-portrait of Will Owsley there, and more of the album credits there. So, uh, yes, this is a fantastic album. I cannot recommend... Pardon me, I'll be right back. Cannot recommend either of these albums enough. Uh, if you have not listened to either one, check them out. Uh, if, if you like um, REM-ish rock, um, it's... Oh, hang on, sorry. Put it just far enough that I couldn't reach it without uh, going out of frame here. Uh, then, yes, um, The Connells is... Ex oh, The Connells actually did not come with a uh, picture sleeve. It just came with a regular paper sleeve, so I just put it in the... Uh... There is a uh, colored variant available, but I just opted for the standard black. Oh, but I did forget to show you the uh, gatefold, which has the song lyrics. So, yes, one of these days I will kind of sit down try and put my my thinking brain on and uh, see if I can tell what the lyrics are trying to say. And it's part of me just doesn't want to uh, unravel the mystery of the lyrics. I just want to, you know, remember, hey, they're, they're just good songs, you know. 
both of these albums are just great, great songs. So yes, if you, as I was saying and interrupted myself, if you like the REM-ish college rock type of stuff from the 90s, uh, check out the Connell's Ring. Um, and if you love Power Pop and you have not heard Owsley's self-titled debut album from 1999, you must check it out. Uh, there's fantastic albums. So, yes. So what do you think of my first attempt at a an Album Diaries video? I have, as I said, three more planned, um, possibly more in the future. Uh, each one has a different theme, two albums per episode, connected by some kind of a theme in some way. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, the reason I wanted to do uh, two albums per episode was because if I just did one album, I would be, af I'm afraid that the video would be too short, but as I can see from the uh, little runtime ticker on my tablet's video recorder, it's, uh, it's approaching a half hour, so, and maybe that wasn't a problem after all. But anyway, to keep this video from going any longer, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and click my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.